In this video, I'm excited to show you what I've been working on this past month. This is a 28 foot enclosed cargo trailer and you can't see it from here, but we upgraded it with a massive off-grid solar power system. Let's take a look. Can it do the miner saw now? Let's see. Later on in the video, I'll show you step-by-step -step how I installed this entire system. But for those who just want a quick overview, we have a 6,000 watt, 240 volt inverter and solar charge controller. We have a 14 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. We have our breaker panel that we wired in, three outlets on the inside. And up here in the front, we have one more outlet, as well as a NEMA L1430 plug, which you can use to power larger 240 volt loads, or even send backup power to a house, just like a generator. This is the 12 volt battery, which is tied into the existing 12 volt system for the lights, as well as for the jack at the front of the trailer. And I added this charger to keep this battery always charged up. On the roof, we have six 410 watt bifacial panels for a total of 2,460 watts. So jumping back in time, this is what the trailer looked like when we first picked it up. Totally empty. Before starting anything else, the very first thing I did was add some rubber flooring, which I got from our local IFA. Next, I could start on the battery, which was a little challenging since it weighs about 300 pounds. But thankfully, we have a tractor, so that made it a little bit easier. Since both the battery and the inverter have to be mounted on a non-combustible material, I used this cement board which, when cut in half, ended up being just about the perfect size. And to get it to sit flush, I just had to remove some of the trim at the front of the trailer. Next, I attached the mounting plate for the battery, and I used washers and self-tapping screws to tie it directly to the frame of the trailer. To prevent the battery wiring from being exposed, I added this conduit box, which should help the installation look super clean. Then it was just a matter of putting the inverter up so I could mark mounting holes. Oh, my oh. Oh. And try not to break it at the same time. This is looking awesome. With the inverter and the battery mounted, we're now ready to start the wiring. The positive and negative cables that come with the battery are actually really nice. They have Degson connectors on one end, so they just click into place. But you still do need to add lugs on the other end to be able to connect it to the inverter. With this tool and a sledgehammer, it actually goes really quick. I know. 
Mommy, Papa, hold the wheel. You see it shrinking? Yeah. No, I'm shrinking. That's too much off. That's too large. This is no, no OP bike. This is my bike. I see. No little bit. You I love Oakley? Yes. You love Oakley at church? Uh-huh. He does. That you too. Now, all the bodies. Shut up. Orange, 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 orange. Orange, orange, you're right. Orange, orange. Now, I can start mounting the breaker panel. I sanded off the paint in one corner of the breaker panel and used a self-tapping screw to bond the panel ground to the frame of the trailer. I used half inch flex tight conduit and that worked pretty well. I'm adding this box on the outside for the 240 volt plug and a 20 amp outlet. And after I sealed it up, I added a box on the inside so I'd have a place to pass the wires through. Then I added a few more boxes and ran the conduit. In between the inverter and the breaker panel, I ran eight gauge for 40 amps. From the breaker panel to the L1430 plug, I ran 10 gauge for 30 amps. And for the outlets, I used 12 gauge for 20 amps. I added the breakers. And then it was just feeding the rest of the wire through. Wire pulling foam definitely makes this easier, especially if you have to go around any bends. And then all I had to do was wire in the outlets. And with that, the AC side of the system is done. To mount the solar panels, I used 12 gauge galvanized super strut. And to prevent corrosion with the aluminum roof, I coated the bottoms with a good amount of clear flex seal. I'll be attaching the super strut directly to these roof cross members, but to make positioning them easier, I measured in about 22 inches and drilled pilot holes all the way through the roof from the inside. After wiping it down, I covered each of the holes with lap sealant, and then I coated the bottom of the super strut as well. And for good measure, I coated the tops of the screws as well. We found the easiest way to get the solar panels up onto the roof was using ladders and with two people.
Then we just squared up the panels and secured them down. We connected our panels in one series string because that worked with our inverter. But make sure you don't forget to do that before you tighten everything down. Or you'll be fishing wire from one end to the other. To get the solar wire down to the inverter, I used a cable entry gland. I made sure to use a rubber gasket so the wires wouldn't get damaged over time. And I sealed it all up with lap sealant. Then I added some more conduit and pulled the wires through. I think that's good enough. And for the PV wire, make sure you use ferrules before you connect it to the inverter. Wow, and we are all wired up. PV lines going in, load, neutral, ground, battery negative, battery positive, and battery communication. Oh man, I'm excited. Okay, let's go plug in the solar panels. Sun is going down. So we got positive. Okay, I'll clean those wires up later. We are connected, let's go turn it on. Well, sun is pretty low at this point, but 100 watts coming in, it's something. Look at that, almost two kilowatts going into the battery. That's awesome. Yes. And the last thing I needed to wrap up was adding this 12 volt battery so that we could power the lights and the electric jack without having to be connected to a tow vehicle. Oi. <laughs> wow, don't do that. Oh boy, I got that on camera. So I can remember not to be an idiot. And with that charger connected, our 12 volt battery should always stay charged. Well, that was way more work than I was expecting, but I'm excited because it is finally done. Let's test it out. We got some shop lights. We got a vacuum. We got a drill press. We have a miter saw. Let's turn on the vacuum and the drill press and see if we can fire up the miter saw. Okay. Drill press is on. Lights are on. Vacuum is on. Okay. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, you can do more. Let's do a bug zapper too. We got a bug zapper. We got a heat gun. Okay, this is gonna be a lot. Okay, heat gun is running. Oh boy, this is a lot. 2,500 watts. 
Okay, can it do the miter saw now? Let's see. Oh yeah. No problem. Well, I am super excited with how this turned out. This trailer is actually for a family member. So stay tuned because we're gonna be bringing it over to their house and wiring it in as a backup power source, which I think is gonna be awesome. I think we're gonna be building one more of these trailers. So let me know in the comments if you have any ideas on how we can make this even cooler. Thanks for watching, bye. For those who stuck around to the end, I almost forgot to try charging the Tesla. Let's see. There we go, it's working. Okay, now the video's over.